opioid deaths in Massachusetts have more than doubled over the last four years and uh, it really has required a response from all aspects of the healthcare community, the uh, public safety and police communities, uh, the educational communities. We're trying to do our part to make sure that every graduating physician understands how to prevent and to treat and to manage opioid use disorders long term. So I think there are a number of things we can do. From my perspective as a pediatrician, one of the things that we need to be um, working towards is really being centered on our patients and our families as they fight through struggles with addiction and on the road to recovery. Indiana University School of Medicine has played a role in the, the fight and combat against the uh, opiate uh, epidemic that we've got through interventions that we've had uh, in southern Indiana where we had an outbreak of uh, HIV related to injected uh, drug use of uh, uh, prescription medications that are used uh, outside of their indication obviously and uh, had to help uh, these rural areas recognize the um, impact of uh, substance abuse um, and the intersection that it can have with these other unintended consequences and serious uh, repercussions of opiate abuse uh, in the form of bloodborne illnesses like HIV and hepatitis C. I think the academic um, centers across the U.S. can play a role in combating uh, the problems that we're having with proper opiate use, uh, recognition of opiate abuse, and addressing uh, issues that come with that in terms of needs for treatment uh, by raising awareness of the problem. The opioid use epidemic called neonatal abstinence syndrome, that is when babies that have been exposed to opioid medications during pregnancy, after they're born, they have a withdrawal syndrome. And we had uh, care patterns at our institution that were not always consistent from unit to unit. So our scholarly work and our research was to figure out a way to make our care both more consistent and more family-centered. I think it's very important for the whole community to come together to agree on common core standards, common competencies for medical education in this area. So my expertise is really in that third and fourth year when they're on their clinical clerkships. So every day they are side by side with us taking care of patients. And we're either talking about how to prescribe pain medications appropriately, say for children who have had surgery or are in a painful state preoperatively. And then again, of course, we're dealing with our newborns who are uh, with, have a dependence disorder on opioids and how to get them through that. Although on our coursework and our clerkship, they're taking care of the babies. Babies, of course, are always in the context of a family. So they are also working with families as the parents struggle on their roads to recovery or unfortunately sometimes have issues with ongoing problems with abuse and dependence. We believe even primary care physicians need to have some familiarity with medication-assisted treatment, uh, the use of strategies such as buprenorphine or suboxone uh, in appropriate cases. Indiana University School of Medicine is implementing a, a new curriculum uh, starting this August. We've had a, a fairly robust program in terms of making sure that our trainees are uh, aware of communication skills that they need to address and screen patients for opiate use, um, how to recognize and appreciate the threats that come with the use of these agents, and then how to get people into the treatment that they need uh, over time. We have a paper forthcoming in the journal Pediatrics that should be out in the next few months showing that our model where we have parents as partners in the care of their babies in a rooming in environment, so not in a neonatal intensive care unit, but rather where they remain together as families, has reduced our rate of medication use from about 50% to about 20%. And with that, our costs have more than halved. We've developed uh, an opioid safe prescribing training immersion uh, designed for students uh, near the time of graduation from medical school that both serves as an assessment 
to see if we've uh, left any gaps in their training prior to that and as a training immersion where they go through four intensive training sessions uh, with standardized patients who are patient actors and with, uh, with mannequin-based simulation. We have been uh, careful to listen to our constituents in terms of what we offer for CME and certainly responding to uh, the HIV outbreak in southern Indiana has been one way that we've created uh, new modules that address HIV screening and treatment uh, issues as well as you know the increasing uh, awareness that there are problems that come with uh, opiate uh, medication use and abuse within our state. Uh, we also have gotten feedback from our trainees in terms of what we offer to our medical students and our residency training programs uh, to make sure that we are again helping our trainees be able to communicate, to recognize, and then to take action when they see problems in these areas.